All right, so we are here to talk about this High Republic Cross Guard, and I believe this is number eight in a series, uh, from Starfall Sabres. Now, I did have a hand in some of this. Um, Nick had uh, commissioned some etched shrouds a while back, and he uh, ended up using this one on this particular hilt. So we'll show that down here in the close-up. Um, but yeah, so let's go over some quick chassis details down on the table. We'll go over some functionalities. We'll hop back out. I'll go over a few functions with the blade in, show off a couple blade styles, and then we'll wrap it up. Anything I don't cover in this video for the owner, I will have a printout with all of the instructions and button commands. So let's drop it down to the table and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're here to talk about this new High Republic cross guard hilt from him. I believe this is number eight from Starfall Sabres. I did etch some plates for Nick a, a while back. And so uh, he ended up implementing them on this particular hilt. So since I did have some involvement with the design of these shrouds, I uh, took that into consideration with the chassis. So right off the top, we've got two copper Phil Guinness switches on the left. This is your power on the right is your aux. We have obviously three emitters. Sorry, I'm having to do this mirror. So we've got a, a CC Sabres as the main. Then we've got a stock V2 Eco in the cross guards. So how we get to everything is we just unscrew the pommel. And then you wanna cut the chassis, it'll just slide right out. And like I said, I took some design cues from my Illustrator file. So I brought some of those vectors over. And then I also, this is the 18650 that comes with it. Took those into consideration with the, see if we can get this to focus. So we got the Starfall logo. We got the little Jedi Council Rondell. Actually, this is in the, the, so in the Jedi Council Chamber, this is the floor rondelle. And these are often also used, these little floral patterns. Uh, so yeah, this is an 18650, 3000 milliamp hours. We've got our chassis here with the uh, Starfall logo in the battery tray. So positive and negative terminals clearly indicated, but obviously spring sides are negative. We've got the Old Republic Jedi logo. And then, like I said, just some of those same Jedi Council Rondell features. We also got a Profi V2 high amp kill switch, KR speak, uh, 28 millimeter bass speaker. So the config is on the SD card. And this is just a press fit into the chassis. Uh, you, you, know, you never have to, but if you did need to, if you didn't have a, a 90 degree data cable, to access your micro USB, you could flip the board up. But I always design these with the intent that you'll get that little tiny 90 degree cable. And then if you ever need to, uh, obviously you can plug this into your computer and it will recognize it as a drive. But if you wanted to go the faster route and just pop the SD card out with some tweezers, you can use a, a little adapter for, the, um, for that. So yeah, so when we're ready, we'll just pop the battery in. You can show either logo or the rondelle. And then we'll hit our kill switch. You get your boot sound. This sports the Starfall Sabres font package, eight fonts, and the last preset is a battery level indicator, which will show up on uh, the ends of the blade. And yeah, so we got our stock rotary PCB. If we look down into the um, hilt there, you'll see the other end of that. So you just can slide this any way you prefer. And then put your pommel on and it will engage pins at the last 
uh, half to a quarter turn, and then you can just hit power. So I will say, because this does use the rotary PCB system and it's just six rails, all of the emitters are basically just mirrors of each other. So on the config, there's only one blade style for each font, and it just mimics it in the side blades. These do take seven eighths blades, uh, each one of these, and then it's programmed for a 32 inch length. So you can either use a BTF strip or the KR pixel sticks. So we do have gesture controls, twist on, twist off, and then thrust on, which is a forward motion. You got your PCBs lighting up. And then aux for blaster blocks. And then when you do gesture controls, you do engage battle mode. So I'll demonstrate that with the blade, but battle mode just means you don't necessarily have to push a, push a button to engage lockups. If you didn't want to engage battle mode, you could always just hit the power button. And now you have to push a button when you want to engage a lockup. So you'll clash the saber as you're holding. And then whenever you let go, you're good. So we'll just go over a couple fonts real quick. Show off all of your letters are lighting up. You got your smooth swing. So to advance fonts forward in the off state, you hit aux. If you want to go backwards, point the hilt down and hit aux. And then again, you can tap power or use the gesture control. And then we'll go backwards to battery level. So we're on our battery level indicator. Now, obviously you won't see those in the emitter, but when you have a blade, you'll have a little blue bump. And the further away from the hilt it is, the more it's charged. But you can also do a button press. I believe it's hold power and tap aux with it off. Volume menu. Nope, that's backwards. So, so that'll engage your volume menu. And you can rotate right for up and then left for down. And then exiting volume menu. So if we do aux and hold power. Battery level 93%. So you got a little announcement there. So again, that's hold aux tap power for bat with the blade off. For our battery level percent, if we didn't have a blade in, and then for volume, hold power tap aux, so just the inverse of those two, and then rotate for your font. I will say, as the battery gets probably less than 50 percent, you may start noticing because there are three blades here, you may start noticing the speaker crackle. It may be closer to 40 to 30 percent, it just depends on how bright the blade is. If it's a white color, it's going to draw more current. And so if you hear any speaker crackle, just charge your battery and you'll be good to go. So yeah, when we're done, just unscrew the pommel, pop the chassis out, hit the kill key. Now, obviously, because there's a kill, or sorry, kill switch, you can just pop it right back in. If you need to, you can pull the battery off, put it on the charger, and then just store it when you're ready to go. So anything I don't cover in this uh, video, either with the blade or right here, I'll have a printout for the owner. It uses the OS 6.7 and F Fernando FET263's prop file. So it'll be his button commands, and there will be a link on that uh, printout for if the owner wants to investigate further on how to use the Sabre. But that pretty much covers it. It's a pretty simple setup. Uh, the only complication is you got three blades. So yeah, that wraps this part up. We'll move over to the blade and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we've talked about the internals, a couple of the components. So I wanna go over some button commands, but I will say right off the bat, there are three 7 8 connectors here. Um, I only have one uh, 7 8 blade to show off, but um, I'll in a moment show that each of them uh, will basically mimic each other. Uh, since this does use a rotary PCB design and there's only one data line, so I can't do a sub blade, but anyway, the you'll you'll be able to use all three blades, um, and then this is programmed for a 32 inch length, which I have here. 
This is a pixel stick from KR, so it has a lot better um, uh, lighting capability and a few more pixels on the strip, so we'll show off some tip effects. But to activate, we can either hit power, which is if the hilt is facing us on the left, um, that'll start us off, but we do have gesture control, so we have twist on and then twist off. And then we have a thrust on, which is a forward pull, push or a, a yank back. So we do that. Now we're in battle mode. So our gesture modes get us into battle mode. And battle mode just means that whenever we clash, we'll engage a lockup until we pull away. Lockups can also include tip effects like melt or if we're facing down drag. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. A clash, that lockup. Now you can move the saber around a little bit. But if you pull away, you'll disengage lockup. So similarly, if we're in the horizontal position and we clash as if we were um, hitting against a wall or something like that, we'll start a melt. And so you can see that here. And it'll start to get a little bit more active the longer you hold it. And if you twist, you'll change the color until you pull away. Now, I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, but um, it will go from like a yellow to a reddish depending on which blade we're on. Now, if we're facing down, we'll engage drag if we clash the saber. And again, you can move it around a little bit, but the moment you wake, uh, yank it away from position, then you disengage. So again, battle mode is just for gesture ons. If we use our power button, we're in regular mode. So now if we clash, we're just gonna get random clashes depending on how hard or what sound effect it's pulling. But if we want to engage a lockup, you can hold either button and clash the saber until you let go of the button, okay? Let's go to a different sound font here. Hero's Journey. Again, I mentioned this below, but this does support, uh, um, uh, sport the Starfall sound font package, which is, I believe, eight fonts in total. And then the final preset is a battery level indicator. So... Uh, on Ruin, this uh, is the only sound font that has a prion, and the prion only happens when you engage uh, the power button. If you use a gesture control, it will bypass the prion. So let's do that real quick. And again, it's a quick sound effect and a different lighting effect. It'll happen on all three blades. Um, However, if we gesture on with a twist, we just go right into our ignition effect, okay? Let's go backwards. So if we hold the hill down and press aux, we'll go backwards. Hero's journey. And let's demonstrate force. So force is just, we're gonna hold the, save, uh, the power button for about a second and let go. And then we'll get like a flickery um, blade style. And then you'll hear a sound effect or if it's a different uh, font, it may have a quote or a mix of sound effects and quotes. So let's do that real quick. And hopefully you can see the animation here and then that sound effect. Now, similarly, that same button command, when it's off, when the blade is off, holding power for a second, we'll start our track. Okay. But we can also do it while the blade is on if we're upright. So again, for, we'll, we'll do a force effect if we're at any other angle, but if we're upright and we hold power, we'll start the track. Which kind of starts off subtle on this. Okay, and then, until we hit power and let go. So again, if, same button press, but if we're horizontal, we'll get that force effect. Okay? All right, so let's go to, and then, so this sound font basically goes with this hill because this is the High Republic cross guard. So the sound effects are a little bit more classic on this uh, particular sound font. They sound more like sword effects, and of course you got your classic blue blade. So you'll sort of hear some sword clangs in those uh, clash effects, like that. Okay. Last button command I'll go over is the co uh, color wheel slash color change. So on any other font, uh, we will hold power and tap aux with the blade on. 
Oops, sorry, that's backwards. Hold aux and tap power. You, you'll get that indicator that you're in color change mode. Now, if we rotate the saber, we're gonna jump between uh, colors. And then if we find one we like, we just hit either button to in, uh, to accept. Oh, I'm sorry, we hit power to accept. <laughs> aux will revert. So, again, let's back that up. Hold, with the blade on, hold aux, tap power to engage, uh, color change, and then rotate to the color, tap power to accept, tap aux to revert. So do that once more. Okay, so now we're in color change. Rotate, pick a color we like. I don't know. And then, let's go to green. There we go. Power to accept. You turn the power off, turn the power back on, and it will remember that. On the fi uh, final sound font, Cornhorn, we have color change direct. And this is to go in line with the lore in the story. Corn uh, had like a dual phase crystal or some dual phase setup, which would change the color and the length of his blade. So when we start the saber, we'll be in a white color. And you'll get that speeder bike sound. And then if we hit color change, we're gonna do the alternate color. And it'll just wipe into that color. So I don't know if you can tell with the ambient lighting, it's a very light purplish color. And then go do it again, and it wipes back to white. So that's the only font where you don't get in the color wheel. So. And then the final preset, as I mentioned, Battery level. It's our battery level indicator. So we're in the high 90s because we're at the very tip of the blade. If you're uh, like 90 something or above, this will go to green, which means it's fully charged. And I'm guessing it goes from green to red. I hardly ever operate a saber down here, so I don't know. But again, you'll probably never get it down here because you'll start hearing either the speaker crackle or something like that. Um, and so you'll probably just want to charge the saber at that point or charge the battery at that point. Okay, so I didn't uh, neglect to demonstrate this, but I mentioned I would uh, to show that each of the emitters do work. Now we did see that the PCBs lit up, so I'm gonna ignite this muted so that I can talk over it. But um, if you wanna do that, you just double tap power and you'll engage the muted. Okay, so we, we've got our stock V2 eco emitters lighting up, but just to show that the information does still uh, travel down the pogo pins, I'm gonna take the main blade off because this is my uh, uh, only seven eighths here. So our blade retention for the main screw is between the two shrouds if the buttons are facing you on the left side. So with the provided Allen key, we'll just disengage that blade retention, pull the blade out. So obviously that PCB is also working. Now, when you do go to put any of these blades in, do not mash the blade down. Uh, most of these are press fit uh, because it's a three piece or it's a two piece um, chassis for, for the holders here. And there's just a little bit of E6000 keeping the PCBs in place. So if we were going to jam this in, we could uh, misalign something and, or destroy something. So all you need to do with any of the emitters, and I'll show it on the main here, is just drop the blade in. Okay. Now I have this lit. So as soon as I drop it, it's going to show up, which you can do if you want to make sure. Um, but you just basically need gravity to do the work and you'll engage that um, blade retention. Now, on the back side is where the Quillian blade retentions are, so the, uh, opposite the buttons. So when we go to put the uh, Quillian blades in, again, you'll probably get like a six inch blade. You just want the, and you can, we, we can do it vertically if we want. You can just use gravity and then, I don't know if I'm showing this, um, and then just engage our lockup screw. Now the, the same Allen key that's provided for the main will work for all three. Um, yeah, but that's all you need to do is you just drop the blade in. Now, what you are noticing here is, oops, I do have this one blade retention screw in. Um, what you are noticing here is that this 32 blade works for any of these emitters. And that's, again, I mentioned that because we're using the rotary PCB system. There we go. We're, we're using a rotary PCB, which just has one data line. So all three of these will support a 32, but obviously you're probably just going to buy six inch quillions. So that's how to do that. Um, if you have any questions, let me know and thanks again.